Yo yo, welcome to lesson 31. I know a lot of you have been asking. So today, we are finally going to learn JavaScript. Before we start, I just want to say that once you know one programming language, it's very easy to transition to another language. The programming concepts are all the same, and the main difference is just the syntax. So if you haven't watched the beginning of the bootcamp where I taught Python, I'd highly advise that you watch and understand it because I'll be breezing through the JavaScript syntax. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so first things first, go to replit.com and then click the plus, select HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I'm gonna name my project JS, which stands for JavaScript. And then I'm gonna click create REPL. And once it's done loading, you're gonna get this HTML page. And I want you to pay attention to line 11. So here we have a script tag that says source equals script.js. And we can find script.js on the left. So if you click here, you're gonna see this empty file with script.js. And we will use this file to write all of our JavaScript code. So technically we can just write JavaScript code directly in our HTML file. However, it's better to create a separate file. So that way you can organize your code such that HTML belongs in HTML, JavaScript belongs in JavaScript, and CSS belongs in CSS. So JavaScript is the most well-known language used directly with websites. It is very similar to Python, but it is a bit more verbose. And you will need to use semicolons to end a statement, whereas in Python, you didn't have to do anything like that. Rather, Python is more dependent on spaces. So a cool thing about JavaScript is that you can write a whole program without using any spaces or tabs at all. All you need is just a semicolon to end each statement. So first things first, let's talk about comments. To create a comment in JavaScript, all you need to do is put two forward slashes like this, and then you can type anything you want. So let's type comment. And as you can see, it's grayed out. So that means it will get ignored. So to create a block comment, all we have to do is do a forward slash and then a star. And then we put a star and then a forward slash again. And basically anything wrapped inside it will be ignored. So let's hit enter twice. And then in here, let's type something. Hello, hello, hello. And as you can see, these hellos are grayed out as well. Cool. Next, let's talk about print. So in JavaScript, we don't print. Instead, we use the developer console. So on Replit, we already have the console here, but if you're not using Replit, all you have to do is right-click the page, go to inspect, and the developer console will pop up. And then all you have to do is go to the console tab. And inside here, you should see the output of your JavaScript code. So since I'm on Replit, I'm gonna close it, and I'm just gonna use the console provided by Replit. So in JavaScript, we have access to the console object, and with this object, we can use the log function, which is basically the print function in JavaScript. So all you have to do is type console, dot log, open the parentheses, open your quotation marks and type hello world. And at the end of the statement, make sure to add a semicolon. And next, what you want to do is click run. And just like that, congratulations, you wrote your first program in JavaScript. Look at you, in 30 lessons, you're already learning your second language. Nice. So one thing to note is that when a web page is loaded, the script inside it will run automatically. So basically, all you have to do is just refresh your web page and that will basically run your script. So in Replit, when we click run, it basically refreshes slash reloads our page and that causes our script to run. Cool. Next, let's talk about variables. Creating a variable in JavaScript is very similar to Python, except we need to declare whether the variable is mutable or constant, where basically mutable just means that the variable can be updated or changed and constant just means that the variable will not change at all. To create a mutable variable, all you have to do is use the keyword let, so let, and then name your variable. So let's do current lesson equals 31, and then close it with a semicolon. And then to create a constant, all you have to do is use the keyword const, so c-o-n-s-t, and then give the variable a name. So let's create a variable for my name. So my name equals, and then I'll set it to Vincent, Vincent, and then end the statement with a semicolon. Cool, and now let's print out each variable. So let's do console.log, and then let's put current lesson and then let's copy this and paste it. And then let's change this to my name. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we have hello world 31 and Vincent. So now let's try updating the variables. So let's do current lesson plus equals one. And let's do my name equals Vincent two. And now let's copy these console logs and put it underneath. And now let's click run. And here we got an error. It says assignment to constant variable and here it tells us that the error is on line 16. So on line 16, we're changing my name to Vincent2, which is not allowed because we declared the variable as a constant. So let's comment out this line and now let's click run again. And here, as you can see, 31 got updated to 32. And here we see Vincent twice. So in JavaScript, when you declare variables, make sure to use the keywords let and const. 
to determine whether your variables are immutable or constant. So in Python, we didn't have this issue because all variables in Python is mutable. So in this example, we declared my name as a constant because my name should not change and we should enforce this rule so that in the future, if we try to change my name, we'll get an error. And constants are very important when you work with a large team. And as you can imagine, you probably want to add some protection to your variables so that way people can't change a specific value. And they also guarantee that the constant will always have the same value. So that way you don't have to worry about bugs related to that value changing. All right, so I don't wanna bore you guys to sleep. It will probably take me forever to go through each and every detail of JavaScript. So now I'll just show you some slides. So let's talk about functions. To create a function in JavaScript, all you need is function and then the name of the function followed by the parameters. And here you open a Google bracket and then inside the body, you just put the logic for the function. So here we're just returning num1 plus num2. And here we have a semicolon. And finally, we close the function with a closing semicolon. This is very similar to Python, except instead of def, we put function. And instead of this colon, we use the squiggle brackets. And cool, next we have list. So in JavaScript, we call it an array. And it's exactly the same as Python. We just use the square brackets and we use commas to separate each value. And in JavaScript, to get the length of a list, we just do dot length. Next, we have loops. So loops is a bit more complicated. To write a for loop in JavaScript, you have to do for bracket let i equals zero. So here we declare the i variable and we set it to zero. And then in the middle, we define the condition for the loop. So here we're saying as long as i is less than the length of the fruit, we're gonna keep looping. And then at the end, we say i++, which means that we're gonna increment the i variable by one each time. And then inside the loop, all we're doing is we're just printing out each fruit. Next, we have a for each loop. To use this, all we have to do is take our list and call the function dot for each. And here we pass it a function. So in this case, I'm passing the function called print item. And this function will take in one parameter, which is the item. So basically this for each will pass in each item. So we get banana, orange, apple, and mango. And all we're doing with each of the item is we're just printing out the item. If this doesn't make sense, just copy this code and try it out on your own. Next, we have conditional statements, very similar to Python, except now instead of elif, we use else if. And one thing to know is that in JavaScript, you can use triple equal signs, where basically a triple equal sign will compare equality for the value and the type. So let me show you a quick example. So let's do one equals equals quotation mark one. So here we're comparing one as a number and checking if it's equal to one as a string. And now let's click run. And here it gives us a true, which is technically true because one equals one, but the types are different. So if we wanna check the types as well, we have to add one more equal sign. So let's add the third equal sign and now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we get false because the number one is not equal to the string one. Cool, and then for dictionaries, it's exactly the same as Python. On the left, you have your key and on the right, you have your value. Next, we have objects. There are two ways to write an object. One way is very similar to a dictionary and inside the dictionary, you can also add a function. So here we have a key called full name and the value is basically a function. And one key thing to note is that in JavaScript, instead of using self, we use this. So here we use this dot first name, which means that we're referring to ourself and we're trying to get the first name property. So this dot first name and this dot last name. So in JavaScript, we can also create classes. So all we have to do is say class fruit. And instead of doing underscore underscore in it, we're gonna use a function called constructor. And in JavaScript, we don't need to use self as the first parameter. And then all we do in the constructor is we just set up the object. So here we're saying this dot name equals name, this dot color equals color. And inside the class, we can also declare a function. So to subclass, all we have to do is declare the name of the class. So in this case, it's apple. Next, we just say extends and then we give it the name of the base class. So in this case, it's the fruit. And in here, we can have our constructor. So similar to Python, we have to use the super function to call the constructor of the base class fruit. So in this case, the constructor takes a name and a color. And here we pass it the name apple and we pass it the color and this apple will have its own type. So here we say this.type equals type. And if we want to override the base class's fun fact, all we have to do is write our own fun fact function inside the apple class. And one thing to note is that inside a class, we don't have to put the keyword function in front of the name of the function. And to create the class, we have to use the keyword new followed by the name of the class, and then we pass it the parameters. So feel free to copy this code and try it out on your own. And in JavaScript, we can also do list operations. So we can do pop, 
which means remove the last element. And then we can use push, which means add an element to the end of the list. That's pretty much it for JavaScript. I'm not going to go through everything. If you need a reference, go to w3schools.com, go to references, and then click JavaScript reference. And here you go. You have a lot of resources to look at. So feel free to try out these examples on your own. And for homework, feel free to rewrite the projects that we did in lesson 19 using JavaScript. In the next lesson, we're going to do some really cool stuff with JavaScript. So try to get comfortable with the syntax. That's it for this lesson. I hope you learned something new. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.